Let's talk about some things that you should know about this graph. This is what we call the exponential graph where b can represent any number that is going to be your base, and it's gonna be raised to the power of x, which is going to be your input variable. Now, looking at this graph, as you go from left to right, there's a couple things that should kind of stand out to you. One, the graph is always going to be increasing, right? Going from left to right, it's always going up and up. The graph is also for all positive values. There's nothing negative down here. Okay, and that's gonna make sense here in just a little second. As we're going to the left, it looks like this graph is getting closer and closer to the x-axis. And actually what is approaching is a horizontal asymptote. And as we're going to the right, the graph is going all the way up to infinity. Based on this information, we can realize or understand that the domain is gonna be from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is going to be from zero to infinity. Remember the domain represents all the x values, so from left to right, and the range represents all the y values. That's going to be from down to up, but it does not go into any negative values. That's gonna be pretty important, but we'll get to that in just a second. The next thing I recognize here is going to be the y-intercept. The y-intercept is always gonna be at zero comma one. That is until we apply some transformations. So let's go and take a look at what are some transformations that we could apply to this graph. Now, this is the most basic one, and we can also go ahead and apply a coefficient to our x, which would add in some different transformations. But for right now, I'll just kind of keep it basic. We should be familiar with the a, right? From Remember from quadratics or for radicals, anything that is going to be outside this function as a multiplier is going to be a reflection about your graph vertically, as well as a vertical stretch or compression. However, for exponential functions, this actually gets even more interesting because yes, you are going to be stretching or compressing the graph, but that's also going to be changing your x-intercept. See, let's go and take a look here at something easy that we can understand. What about if my base was two? So I had two to the x, right? Now, obviously, as I choose numbers for x that are gonna be bigger and bigger, you can see that it's gonna keep on getting me bigger and bigger values. And we'll get to the ones that are really smaller here in just a second. But what about when I put a zero in for x? Well, anything raised to the zero power is just gonna be one. So if I throw a number, any number in front of that function, and I allow x to be zero, it's gonna be three times one, meaning this value is now gonna take replacement of my new y-intercept. So whatever you have as your a, that is now going to be, now again, this is minus any other shifting compression, you know, shifting left or right or up or down, but this is now going to be my new y-intercept. That's something very, very important to understand. Furthermore, we kind of remember that a is again that reflection up and down. Right, so if A is negative, my graph is going to be reflected down. But that's not the one that is the most important. Most students kind of remember that. The one that really tricks students up is when my X or my coefficient on my X is going to be negative. That is gonna turn this from a growth function now to a decay function. The, rather than the graph being reflected about the X axis, it's now going to be reflected about the Y axis. Now, let's go and see why this makes sense. What I like to think about this is just kind of ahead and kind of rethink about these negative exponents. Because if you remember this negative exponent, what is basically is telling me is I can rewrite this as a y equals to a one half raised to the x power, right? I can basically think about this as a, sorry, I should probably have done this first, y equals a two to the negative first to the x power. And anything raised to the negative power, we can rewrite here as our reciprocal. And that's what's really important because sometimes you'll see exponential functions given with a negative power. And then sometimes you'll see them as a base, as a fractional base. So anytime you have your base that is between zero and one as a fraction, you know it's going to be a decay function, not going to be a growth function. So those are some very, very important characteristics. We know that our H is gonna be shifting our graph left to right. Our k is gonna be shifting our graph up or down. But if you can make sure you understand the domain range, understand where the asymptote is, understand the y-intercept, as well as the impact that your a is gonna make on it, and how to differentiate when you have a growth or a decay function based on what the base is or the sign in the power, then you are gonna be all set for your test.